first went to college for an engineering degree and I really loved my experiences with that. I actually was an industrial engineering major for two years and was able to do an internship with Walt Disney World and got exposed to a lot of fantastic things um, through engineering. Um, but some of my interests lied more in kind of like a leadership and um, working with people more. So I switched to um, industrial psychology. I went to um, Penn State University and it's a large school with a lot of different you know, major options. Um, so, still kind of always kept the interest, is, interest in sciences. My engineering background really gave me a lot of confidence with challenging math classes and science classes and computer skills. That's always been key in like whatever project I do, like having stronger computer skills has helped. So today I'm in this role kind of as adjunct faculty. Um, I also um, helped found and start the um, LC Learning Garden um, and get a sustainability club started. And I just find that like all my different experiences in the STEM fields assist with these projects in some way or another. So I teach a class at LCSE um, called Introduction to Natural Sciences and kind of I always think of because I had a lot of STEM experience um, but also really like to work with people and teach that like in the varied experiences that I have I can make um, science more interesting to people who aren't into science. <laughs> so that's what I try to do a lot through this Intro to Natural Sciences class. I get to work with a lot of students who aren't science majors and um, try to really show why it's relevant in their life. Particularly sustainability then, that topic you get to think about how do we all use energy? How do we all use water? How do we um, access food in our lives? And that is something we all have experience with in some way or another. So if we cover those topics in my science classes, it really hits home and people get more connected to it. So a sustainability club is what I'm really seeing now. Um, their opportunity is to gather students who have similar interests, who care a lot about local foods, who care about gardening, sustainability, and so it's finally a group formed on campus that can attract, you know, these like-minded students to, you know, be together as a larger group and then make a larger impact. They'll have a constant role in kind of keeping up with the garden, trying new project ideas, um, the garden um, food production. I mean, if there's projects they can do to make it more efficient in growing food, that's great. They want to do larger projects like building solar greenhouses or, you know, just things that would enhance that space or use other areas of campus um, that would then, you know, eventually support food growth. That would be an opportunity they have with the club um, to do that and, and get these experiences too where it's like, it's low risk. When you're a college student in a club, you might make a big impact with your project, but you know, you're trying it out, you're learning, it's the time for you to do that. So maybe you learn all these skills and then you apply it in a future job, but you wouldn't have necessarily had that opportunity in a class or in the classroom. Yeah. Well, Lewis Clark State College, as an institution, a public um, institution in the state of Idaho, does have part of their mission to kind of educate and serve the community. So they have this opportunity um, not only to grow some things that will serve local residents, but to demonstrate to the community, look, you can grow in this way. You know, here are some efficient ways, here are some techniques. So we're gonna try to put a lot more information out there of like, this is how you could do square foot gardening, a really efficient type of gardening, or um, this is how you can use water, um, um, in a more conservation-minded way, or these are the type of things that grow here really well, <laughs> you know. And then we have opportunity to put out um, information of uh, have you used QR codes with your phone, like scanning those little oh, yeah. block QR codes. So we're thinking of having those all over the garden. So it becomes this like kind of place that people can come and interact with the environment and learn. Um, and Backyard Harvest does want to educate and you know can help people empower them to be able to get access to fresh, healthy food. Um, so there is like, you know, we both want to educate and um, get resources to people. Backyard Harvest is very, very focused on that, you know, mm -hmm. one of getting the fresh food that's already grown here and getting it to people, um, having it not go to waste our community. So welcome, this is the uh, Montessori, um, Children's House Montessori School Natural Playscape area. And they already had some gardening started but with the assistance um, or the partnership with Backyard Harvest, they were able to expand to several more garden beds this year, um, focusing on um, growing more um, vegetables. 
<clears throat> for our local food banks. So this might you know, really expand and get a lot larger, our raspberries in here, but we do have growing up here these pole beans. They'll climb up like seven, eight, nine feet, so they're going to be getting close to um, being able to be harvested soon. Yeah. Here's, oh my goodness, there's one, that's the biggest one I've seen so far.